-hmm. seen the last two off seasons. It's if Aaron wants to come back, he'll be here. He said multiple times this year that he doesn't think it'll be just his decision. Do you guys want him as your quarterback next year? Yeah, like I said in the bye week, I think uh, you know I want all these guys back. That's that's part of that. Um, he's certainly going to take some time. You know, I think that's you know that's fair. Um, and that as we work through this, I think um, uh, as he takes his time, kind of makes his decision just on his playing career in general, then we'll get together and, and move forward that way. Ryan, he but, has had his least productive season of his career. He had three different injuries. He turns 40 next year. Why, why would you want him back? What are you seeing that would make you feel that way? Well, you know, certainly this year was, you know, I think uh, he was dealing with some moving pieces, uh, some injuries and things like that. It wasn't a great year offensively for us as a whole. Um, but, I mean, you guys saw as well. He, he still can play at a very high level. I uh, really like the way he led us. Um, so, you know, again, I think as we move forward over the next month or so, we'll, you know, start putting these things together and see, see how that transpires. To clarify, you think it is his decision in terms of coming back if he wants to be back? We made a really big commitment to him, you know, last off season, you know, so I think uh, as we did that, it wasn't certainly for just this year. So, we'll, like I said, he's going to take his time and, and, and the communication will be, you know, you know, pretty constant as we move forward. Hey, Brian, uh, going into the next season, who gives you a better chance to win, him or Jordan? Well, I mean, you're talking about a four-time MVP, right? So um, we are very excited about Jordan and where he's at. There's no doubt about that. Um, but Jordan's never played a 16, 17-game season, gone through all that stuff. So um, it's no different than we moved from, you know, Brett to, to Aaron, right? You know, I mean, so you just that's – a, that's a hard thing to say. But at the same time, I mean, where Aaron's at, the level he's at, um, you know, he would – I think he, there's not many teams he wouldn't give the best chance to win. Well, you know, I asked him this after the game on Sunday too. Um, you know, he's dropped these breadcrumbs of, you know, in Chicago, well, there's got to be mutual desire. And he's done it a few more times. What would give him the impression that you guys don't want it back? Because he, I asked him flat out if anybody has indicated that to him, and he said, no, it's just a feeling he has. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think anybody's given him. I think that's a question for him right now. It wouldn't be for me. You know, I think this was a tough season. You know, this was, was not what we expected. It was not the... Uh, that stretch in the middle was really hard, you know. So I think all of our players, not just Aaron, um, you know, there's different feelings as you go through that. So again, I don't want to speak for him, but that's that's certainly a question for him. But you have not you have not given him no we've had great conversations. It was, you know, like we always do. Um, talk this week. It was really good conversations and um, I really respect the process he goes through after the season. Uh, he's done this for a long time. Um, uh, what he goes through during the off season to get prepared for a season is significant. And, and I understand the, the decision he has to make or whether he wants to go through that. So um, I've always tried to give him that time. We talked about the season, uh, what went right, what went wrong, what we liked, what we didn't, um, but not a lot of future stuff. Brian, going back to Jordan, can you envision a, a scenario where both of them are on the team, coexist, whatever sure. term you want to use and how? Yeah, no, I think, uh, you know, again, we really like the development of where Jordan is. I think he's ready to play. Uh, I think that's his next step in his development. Um, but um, those guys work well together in the room. You know, I think if, if anything, this year would have happened to Aaron and, and Jordan would have had to play a significant amount of time, we felt really good about that. Um, but it, like, it's like any quarterback in the National Football League, when they haven't done it, uh, you go into that and there's, there's some unknowns. They got to handle a lot of different things, see a lot of different things before they can get to a point where they can win games in this league. So, um, but yeah, no, I could foresee that. Jordan might be going into his fourth year as a backup. Is there any concern or is he indicated at all that he's just ready to play, whether it's here or somewhere else? Well, I definitely think he's ready to play. You know, I think he feels that way. I think he's chomping at the bit. Um, but at the same time, we're going to do what's best for the Green Bay Packers and, and what gives us the best chance to win moving forward. So is it is it pretty much a given that you either exercise the fifth-year option or do something else contractually to, to keep him with you for beyond this upcoming season? Yeah, Pete, I wouldn't say that's a given. I think we're kind of working through that, what's best. I mean, obviously, we don't even know the salary cap number for this coming year you know usually by now we kind of have a sense of what that's going to be so um, once we, we get that and um, we start down the track of kind of looking how we're going to put this team together you know for 23 and beyond um, we'll, we'll make that decision but we're not there yet from your perspective what caused the drop in Aaron's production this season what gives you the confidence maybe it isn't the start of a decline and that he can get yeah. back to well, certainly when, you know, losing Tay, you know, the, that was a big part of this. Um, I think uh, there were some moving pieces on the offensive line early with, as some of those guys, you know, Elton and Dave got back from injury, uh, Bobby Tanyan as well. So I think that that's part of it. Um, and then obviously he dealt with some significant injuries and, and like he always does, man, he, he plays through things that most guys don't. 
And um, but at the same time, you know, I think our offense as a whole just was inconsistent. You know, week in, to, uh, week out, there were some flashes, there were some glimpses in games where I thought we were getting back to to, to the product productivity level that we've we've seen in the past, but um, we weren't able to con you know string those things together. Is there any concern about his big play or big game performances? I mean, he didn't play well against Detroit, kind of the same thing against San Fran last year. Yeah, Bill, I think they're all big games for us, but certainly, you know, those the season enders are, you know, so magnified. Um, as a team, we've struggled to figure out a way to play really well in these final games, you know, um, that have everything on the line, kind of winner or go home games. So um, we're continuing to look at that. Um, it's very important to us. Um, but, you know, whenever you don't finish the Super Bowl off of the win, you're going to look back and, and feel, you know, look at why you didn't play better in those games. During that stretch in October, <coughs> How much consideration did you give to playing Jordan than a quarterback with a fractured thumb and missing practice? Yeah, I mean, I think as long as we're in it, you know, we were going to play the guy that gave us the best chance to win those games. You know, I talked to you at the bye week. I think we might have been four and eight at the time. Um, it, it was, certainly wasn't looking good, but I did feel that if the guys could come together and just get something started, that we'd have a chance to get back in this. It wasn't in our control at that time. Uh, really proud of, of, you know, not only the players, but the coaching staff, the whole organization. Um, you know, we just, you've seen teams quit before in those situations, and our guys never did. They kept coming to work. Um, they didn't blink. Um, and we had a couple games fall our way, and then just kind of, you saw it going, and we were really excited to see if we could we could get into these playoffs and see what we could do, but it just didn't happen. But, um, no, I think as long as, you know, as long as we have an opportunity to keep winning games and keep moving forward and get in the playoffs, we're always going to make the decision to, to, to go out and win the game. Ryan, you have this um, option to really not do anything with Aaron until the start of the regular season. Mm -hmm. Is there a chance you would, even if he says he wants to come back, you would just hold off on that just because you don't know what could happen in the future? No, I think, you know, again, those are all hypotheticals. And I want to get through this period of time where, you know, he has a chance to get away and, and kind of see what he wants to do. And, and Matt and I start to work through, you know, we're, we're meeting with everybody in the organization trying to um, just go through this, this season and, and then start to, you know, plan out 2023. So um, those are hypotheticals. I just don't, I don't know if we're there yet. Could you look him in the eye and say we're ready to move on from him? If we were, sure, absolutely. I mean, you're going to be honest with them. That's... You know what I mean? I think he deserves that. You know, if we get to that point, I just, we're not at that point. Right. You, mentioned that, uh, you, you mentioned how committed Aaron is to getting ready for the season from what he puts his body through in the off season. Do you need more of that work to be here in Green Bay? Because the last two years, you know, he's missed most of Well, I think, you know, we want all our players here in the off season. I think, you know, uh, I think Matt and his staff, I think it's just when guys are together, first of all, I think there's more energy in the building, certainly when you're quarterback and your leaders in the building. Um, so we want all our guys here. It's, it's, it's optional and voluntary, as you guys know, uh, with the exception of the mandatory mini camp. So, um, but we would like, you know, we, we invest a lot in these guys and we would certainly like that investment back from all of our guys. But, you know, there's, there's rules for a reason and, and they're you know, negotiated with the, in the CBA. So, um, you know, I know a lot of the veteran players probably need less, you know, of that. Um, but sometimes our younger players need those guys here as well. So um, as we get moving, you know, into this next season, we'll kind of see how that goes. You were pretty steadfast, I think it was two off seasons ago, that you weren't going to trade him when you didn't want to be here. Mm -hmm. If a team called and, and wanted to inquire about that, would you pick I, up? I appreciate the question. Those are hypotheticals. Again, I think, you know, he's got a lot of thinking to do about what he wants to do. And once, once he gets through that process, then we'll get together and start, you know, planning this thing out. Brian, if he, if he comes back um, at the same contract, are you back shedding um, cap again this year? Are you redoing deals and everything to stay under? There'll be a little bit of that probably you know, no matter what. You know, I think, um, again, we don't know the cap number, what it's going to be right now. Again, usually we have a little bit of an idea, but um, they've been kind of slow to, to roll that out to us. So once we kind of have that number and, and kind of understand, you know, how we're going to we move forward, and but it, regardless, no matter what happens, we're going to do some of that. You know, along those lines, is David Bakhtiari your left tackle next season? I would hope so. You know, I mean, I think um, obviously, I think he's. We're hopeful that he's kind of cleared some of those injury hurdles. You know, that he had the last few years. I thought he got into a really good group before the appendectomy, um, which set him back. But then when he came back, he kind of like you know he just stepped in and, and like like he hadn't missed any time. So he's unique that way. I think he got into a really good rhythm and learning how to what he needed in practice to get to the games. 
Um, and I'm hopeful that as we get you know beyond this season, um, that rhythm will serve them well as we go forward. What about Mason? Uh, again, these are all decisions we're going to work through this this off season. I mean, you know, David's under contract, Mason's not, so we're working through all that stuff. Mason had a, an outstanding year this year; um, was really clutch uh, in a lot of ways. I mean, um, so you know, it's uh, he's he's performing at a high level for a long time, and obviously having Rich coming in and stuff, and him, him adapting to a new special teams coach for the I don't know how many years in a row now, um, but he um, he carried us in a few of those games. There's no doubt about it. Not sure about a few days to reflect, but what went wrong this year? I mean, you went 13 wins in a row, three years in a row. I'm sure you thought this team was going to be damn good. Um, yeah. The defense wasn't, the offense wasn't. What happened? I think you hit it on the head. I mean, I think um, certainly um, we had some some moving parts, but we just never played complementary football. You know what I mean? Uh, I think when at, at times when our defense was playing well, we didn't adjust and, and do things in the second half, and our offense was taking some time to get going. So, um, you know, I think it's, I think we got better as the year went on, um, but I think we, there was just inconsistencies in our complementary football, um, and I think that hurt us along the way. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game, the highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics? Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.